Now, in cooperation with police and federal law enforcement departments throughout the United States, the only national program that brings you authentic police case history. Waterman Pens and Waterman's Inc. present Gangbusters. Tonight, the case of Joe McCann and the West Side Syndicate. They say we ruled an empire of crime in the East. Robberies, extortions, assaults, escapes. They even cased Uncle Sam for a cool million and carried out the job without a hitch. Yes, tonight's case deals with men who thought they were big timers, but whose bragging and arrogance do not tell of the inevitable climax of capture or death. Waterman's pens, everyone a master writing instrument, and Waterman's ink. The ink that goes up to three times as far as ordinary inks are proud to bring you gangbusters presenting facts in the endless war of the police on the underworld. Facts that show the operation of our law enforcement officials in their work of protecting our citizens. Commissioner Louis J. Valentine, on leave as interviewer of gangbusters and serving in conquered Japan at the personal request of General Douglas MacArthur, has asked the Honorable James Shuey Malone... Director of Public Safety, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, to narrate by proxy tonight's case. Now, Director Malone, just six weeks ago on Lincoln's birthday, the criminal considered public enemy number one was trapped in a Chicago attic after the most intensive manhunt in recent years. That's right, Don Gardner. And events leading up to this elaborate trap make up one of the most spectacular police files on record. We'd like to hear about them, Director Malone. Well, Don... One winter's day some years ago, a heavily built man walked through the fourth floor hall of an apartment house in uptown New York City. He stopped at a door and took a key from his pocket. Ed, where have you been all day? Well, like I told you, Aggie, I'm looking for a job. What's the matter with you? John McCann is here. Well, so? You didn't tell him to come out. Oh, relax, night. will you, Aggie? Ed, you promised me you wouldn't run with McCann anymore. He's no good for you. Well, let me pick my old friends, will you, Aggie? Where's McCann? In the bedroom, lying down. Ed, please, listen to me. Now, take it me. easy, will you? Told you this morning I was going out to get a job. Well, you've been saying that for weeks. Well, I got a job. You did? Yeah. Oh, Ed, that's wonderful. Yeah, great. Well, what kind of a job? Well, you know in all the railroad stations, how they got billboards with those ads on them? Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, it's not much of a job, but I'm going to put up some ads. Bill poster. Gee, honey, that's swell. Well, what's the swell about it? All day riding from one railroad station to another, posting bills. Oh, don't worry, Ed. You'll love it, aren't you? Mm, maybe. Well, I'm going in and say hello to McCann. Uh, Ed. Yeah? No matter what McCann tells you. Keep your job, Ed. Please keep it. Promise me. After all the trouble I went through to get the job, you think I'm crazy? Oh, don't worry, Aggie. <laughs> I'll fix it to bite deep, will you? Okay. Hey. Hey, McCann. <clears throat> oh, Ed. Back. No, just now. I got the job. I start Monday. Oh, good, good. Uh, gonna have an assistant for free. An assistant? Yeah, me. I'm gonna be your assistant bill post. Oh, now, look, McCann. There ought to be an easier way. Nobody ever got to be a millionaire an easier way. Well, okay, McCann. But I don't like the idea of playing nursemaid to billboards in every railroad station between New York and Washington. <laughs> That's worse. So what? It's work. You gotta find the best spot to knock off that currency shipment before it gets to the Treasury Department. You think of any better way to case it up? No, I guess there ain't any. You said it. Look, I'm starved, Ed. You think uh, Aggie'd rustle up some food? Yeah, I already told her to. You uh, tell her about your new job? Yeah, she's tickled. You didn't tell her the real reason you took it? No, of course not. You know, Aggie don't care much for me. Well, it's not you, McCann. Aggie just don't go for a hot dough. Why, well, she'd be happy if I'd take a job like this bill posting and stick with it for the rest of my life. You ought to be careful. Aggie might get ideas of the stretch and sing sing would make you honest. Oh, no, not Aggie. She's a woman, ain't she? Remember, Ed. 
You can never figure a woman. Let's smoke a cigarette before we start on our next billboard, huh? Yeah, it's okay with me, McCann. Well, how about it? Is this Trenton a better spot than the others? We gotta pass up Trenton, too. Give me a light. Oh, sure. What's the matter here? Didn't you see? The Trenton police got a permanent detail right here in the station. Well, there's never more than two cops. We can handle it. Yeah, but remember, we gotta go up the stairs, through the station, and out on the street. Hmm. It'll take time. Too much time. Okay, you're the boss. But I'll sure be glad when I can throw these posters down a sewer. Soon, then? Soon. Mm. I'm uh, going to look over the Baltimore and Washington stations. Well, that's crazy. Those big stations are rotten with guards. Maybe. And I'm going to take a look anyway. Yeah. You finish up, go on back to New York and meet you Sunday at Aggie's apartment. Right. Let's get going on that other poster. Northbound train for New Brunswick, Elizabeth, Newark, and New York. Now arriving on track one. Northbound train for New Brunswick, Elizabeth. And all that stuff you told me was a lie, huh? McCann has been working with you. That bill posting job was just an act. You're just using it to case a job. Oh, now take it easy, Aggie. What are you cooking there? You'll find out when you eat it. Ed, you made me a promise. Now look, Aggie. There's no use trying to make me something I ain't. No, I guess there isn't. Now, McCann will be here in a few minutes. Now, be nice to that guy. He's a wonder, Aggie. You'll get caught, Ed. They'll get you as sure as you're standing there. Oh, not a chance, Aggie. It's going to be perfect. This is going to be the last job. Millions. I'll be fixed for life. That's McCann. I'll let him in. And don't you pop off in front of him. Hello, McCann. Hi, Ed. Hello, Aggie. I said, hello, Aggie. I understand you're going to make a million dollars, McCann. Aggie, cut it, will you? Go on, Aggie. What were you saying? I understand you're casing the biggest job ever. Now, look, McCann. Shut up, Ed. So Ed told you, didn't he? Well, he told you right, Aggie. So it's going to be the biggest thing ever, huh? Millions. So big you'll never have to pull another job. What about it? Okay, I'm for it. But only because it's going to be the last job. Now, look, McCann, she gets an idea. You can't get it out of her head. Uh, what she would have found out anyway. Okay, Ed, okay. Don't worry about it. I picked out a spot. Yeah, where? Washington, D.C. Washington? Oh, you nuts will never make it. They got a million cops down there. The way I got it figured, it'll be a pipe. Yeah. The train pulls into the Union Station in Washington five minutes before two in the afternoon. Oh, daylight. That's right. They unload the door from the train on a baggage truck. It goes over the bridge, across First Street to the post office. And that's where we get it, at the bridge. Well, what about the guard? No guards there. Only the guy that pushes the baggage truck. And then... Machine gun, huh? No shooting, man. I hope. No? Now we can happen. Now, I figured there'd be five or six big sacks of dough on the baggage truck. We kidnap the guy, make him grab two, then we take as many as we can manage, load the dough, and then the guy in the car, and we're off. With Mike at the wheel. That's right. When? Lincoln's birthday. Ought to be nice and quiet. I'll ride down to Washington on a train, meet you right at the bridge. Mike will be in a car parked on First Street. Will you see me get off the train? We don't kidnap the guy. But we man. don't kidnap the guy. No, they won't buy us. You crack the guy's skull, I'll take care of the other guy. Right. I'll watch him. Okay. Ready? I'm all set. <laughs> He's out. Hey, what the devil are you doing? Right. I got this one. Grab the money sack. I got two. Yours okay? Yeah, yeah. What about the other sack? Many of these. Let's go. All right. <laughs> Come on, hurry it up, Mike.
can slow down, Mike. Well, you got away, Clean. Clean again. How much did we got? Stick to your driving, Mike. We'll count up a score later. She had? I tell you it'd be a pipe. When I could guess how much we got in these three sacks? Oh, I don't know. Half million? Two million at least. Two million? No kidding. Watch the road, Mike. Are oh, you dreaming, my can? There ain't no two million. You say there's only a half a million? Yeah. A half million. Tops. Tell you what I'll do, eh? What? Settle with you right now. You take 200,000 for your share of the score. 200,000, huh? That's right. You mean I'm guaranteed 200 grand even if my split comes out less? Yeah. And everything over 200 grand, I can. You're pretty sure you don't, McCann. Did you know? Say 300,000, I'll think about it. 250 grand. 300. A quarter million, Ed. Guaranteed. 300 grand. You heard my price. Okay, McCann. You got a deal. A quarter of a million. McCann and his henchmen could hardly wait to settle the outcome of this curious bargain done, but they had no idea of the actual value of the huge shipment of currency they'd stolen. Well, we're certainly curious to know how much it was, too, Director Malone. But first, here's a word from Waterman. Have you seen the new Waterman taperite pens? Have you noticed how the point is so artfully encased in its plastic sheath, yet so deftly done that you see what you write? You don't write blind. And notice its graceful sweep of line from its glistening, precious metal cap down to its finely molded barrel. Yes, it's sleek, it's slim, it's trim, it's beautiful. And behind this beauty and quality is Waterman's craftsmanship. Craftsmanship that has been famous for more than 60 years. Every Waterman's point individually ground by hand. Every Waterman's ink feed fashioned to microscopic accuracy. Note this, too. Whether you pay only three fifty for a stunning stalwart with its conventional point, or up to thirteen fifty for the magnificent stately, you get Waterman's workmanship. That means good pens. Pens you can count on to give you faithful service over the years. Smart, sleek, and slim, really beautiful pens you'll be proud to own. Buy Waterman's for beauty. By Waterman's for easy writing. By Waterman's for long service. It's the sure way to get the best. Always look for the name Waterman. Now back to Gangbusters and the Honorable James Shuey Malone, Director of Public Safety, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. You were telling us, Director Malone, how McCann and his gang made a clean getaway after robbing the shipment of currency. Yes, Don. McCann had prepared a special hideout near Brentwood in the eastern section of Washington, D.C. After the robbery, the gang drove directly to the hideout. With shades drawn, they sat down around a heavy table on which mail sacks containing the huge money shipment were piled. What do you say, McCann? Open them up. Shut up. Well, Ed, you can still back out. It's over two million, uh, I settled for 250 grand. I'll take it. Hand me the knife, Mike. Sure. Well, here goes. Give me a second. No. Get away, will you? Look at it. Thousands. Uh, wait a minute. What? Look at it. Well, I'll be... Let's see that other sack. Hurry, McCann. Shut up. The same. How about that? Oh, there is one. I... Just like the others. No, ain't that great. But it's still full, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, it's still. The whole bunch ain't worth a nickel. It's all cut in half. Mutilated. Every right bill, right down the middle. Did it with nothing? Not without the other half, it ain't. Well, looks like we picked the loser. Well, you and me, McCann, but not Ed. What do you mean? He's got 250 grand coming, guaranteed. Yeah, McCann, what about that? You expect me to pay off, eh? Well, a deal's a deal. The deal hinges on how much we got. We got nothing. I was guaranteed 250 grand. And? Well, by rights, I should get it. By rights, you should get it, yeah. Look, call off the deal, Ed. You get a double share, the next job. Mm. Okay, the deal's off. Now, what happens now? Every bill goes down the sewer tonight. What, what down the sewer, I said. Then we can all go back to New York and figure how we can make up for this bum score. Oh, 
Post Office Inspector Reed to Captain Barney Dowd, New York Detectives. Bandit to escape today with $4 million in mutilated money consigned to Treasury Department, Washington. Narrowly missed equal amount good currency loaded on same baggage truck. Shipment originated Federal Reserve Bank, New York. Getaway car, dark sedan. Stolen license plates, 38-562. Check all possible suspects, New York gangs. to me, you wouldn't have had all this. But no, no, you oh, got to go ahead. Oh, Aggie. That enough missing a four million dollar score without you rubbing it in. Well, this ought to be a lesson to you. You expecting anyone? No. Not the cans, not. Cops? Well, how should I know? I ain't taking chances. Ed, put away that gun. Shut up. Get over where you won't get hurt. Me, Mike. Open up. Oh, Mike. Okay. All right. Come on in. Well, the can says he's got the hideout already. You should come over as soon as you can. Okay. Well, oh, hello, Mike. You enjoy spending your cut? Cut it, Aggie. Can you imagine if a treasury guy's cutting good money in half? There ought to be a law. That's why they cut it in half, on account of guys like you. Yeah. Just look at him, will you? Look. They saved a couple of them. Why, you... McCann told you to dump all that stuff in the sewer. What harm could a few of them do? I can't bend them. Well, get rid of those bills, Mike. Oh, yeah. If McCann catches you with them, he'll skin you alive. Okay, okay, I'll get you. Uh, now, look, Aggie. McCann's got the old hideout lined up on Academy Avenue. We'll work it like the other time. I'll be going out for food. You call me at that delicatessen at 11.30 every night like you used to from a payphone. Well, you don't think you're hot enough for the cops to tap the phone here. Well, you can't tell. You got the number? Yeah, it's written down someplace. And you should have stuck to that bill posting job. You should have stuck. Inspector Reed speaking. Captain Barney Dowd, Inspector, New York Police. Oh, yes, Captain. What can I do for you? Inspector, I think we have a couple of those mutilated bills from your Union Station robbery. Hey, where'd they turn up, Captain? A kid found halves with two $20 bills in an ash can uptown in Washington Heights. And the neighborhood may give us a lead. Well? The ash can belongs to a house where a girl named Aggie Morgan has an apartment on the fourth floor. Who's this Aggie Morgan, Captain? Well, she's a girlfriend of Ed McNamara. And McNamara is certainly one man who could be in on that kind of job. Hey, thanks, Captain Dowd. I'll take the next train to New York. You're not doing yourself any good, Aggie. I know what I'm doing. Even if I knew where I was, I wouldn't tell you coppers. All right. You might as well take it to headquarters, Inspector. I haven't seen Ed in week. Who has Ed been palling with lately? How should I know? You could help, Ed. Yeah, how? If you were to tell us who Ed was with on that Washington train robbery... Things might go a lot easier. <laughs> you wouldn't kid me, copper. We'll have to hold you as a material witness. You mean, keep me in jail? Until we find Ed McNamara. If you told us where he is, you wouldn't have to go. You mean that? We do, Aggie. And things go easier for Ed. You have my word. I'll make a bargain with you, Captain Dowd. What? You just let me stay here. The minute Ed walks in, I'll tell him to phone you. Why, you... All right, man. Take it to headquarters. You don't have to push. I can walk by myself. Eh, we won't get much out of her, Captain Dodd. I'm afraid not, Inspector. Well, where do we go from here? We're not even sure Ed McNamara was in on the Washington job. No, but if I know Ed, he sure could have been. I'll have my men do a thorough job on this apartment. Maybe something will turn up to give us a break. Hey, finish up that drink, Ed. You don't want to stay away from the hideout too long. I wish I knew how hot we are, McCann. Uh, no sense taking chances. Uh, look, Ed, I'm going to run over to Newark. Yeah? Yeah, I want to talk to a guy about a couple of payroll jobs to tide us over. Now, uh, you get some food in the joint so we can hold up for a while. Yeah, I'll get it in that delicatessen. Yeah, 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 they got good stuff. 
Get enough for a couple of weeks. Yeah, that ought to be plenty. Yeah, it doesn't look like the cops have made us for that Washington job. Why should they? Why should they? Those two guys we slugged didn't get a good look at us, and all that phony dough was down the sewer. <laughs> hey, how about the license plates? No, I got them hit under the carpet. Yeah. Well, we can't use those plates again until tomorrow we dump them in the river. Good. Then there's nothing they can pin on. You better get on over to hideout. Go out for the food later. Right. I'll be back from Newark about midnight. Midnight, huh? Yeah. Wait up for me. See you at 12. Inspector Rain. Captain Dowd, Inspector. Oh, yes, Captain. Anything interesting in Aggie's apartment? Well, among other things, we found a phone number. Phone number? A delicatessen on Academy Avenue. It's too far away from Aggie's apartment for her to buy food there, but she may be contacting Ed McNamara through the public phone there. Good work, Captain. I'll pick you up in about ten minutes, Inspector, and we'll see if this pays off. Attention, Manhattan Detective Squad. Ed McNamara spotted entering delicatessen on Academy Avenue after leaving rooming house two doors away. Emergency squads, prepare for raid. Emergency squads, prepare for raid. Inside of house will be covered by Captain Todd's detail. Stairs on the second floor, Inspector. Yeah, that should give us good cover. We can rush down and get him if he opens his room on the first floor. Get your gun ready. Yeah. I think McNamara's got that room down there all by himself. Most likely. The way the punch operates, they usually split up after a job. Hey, street door is open. What up, Ed? Yeah, what? That's it. Keep him high. Come on, Inspector. What's the matter, Captain? Get inside your room. All right, all right. Preskin. I ain't got a gun. We'll find that out. Nothing on him, Captain. Uh, see, I told you. Put the cuffs on him. Right. Where's your roommate, Ed? What roommate? I'm staying here alone. What do you want me for, anyway? That Washington mail stick up. I never even heard of it. You'll hear plenty about it before we're finished. Okay, so I'll hear plenty. Now, take me downtown and book me so I can get a night's sleep. It's already midnight. I guess we'd better take him in, eh, Inspector? Yeah, I suppose so. Grab your hat, Ed. I don't need no hat. Let's get out of here. You're awful anxious to get booked, Ed. Oh, am I? Yeah. Why do you want to go to jail so fast? I told you, I want some sleep. Well, I think we'll wait around and see who you're expecting. I ain't expecting anybody. It's only midnight. We've got lots of time. Now, take me in, will you? We're staying a while. Shut the door, will you, Inspector? Right. What do you know about that Washington mail job, Ed? I said I never even heard of it. Well, that's a start. Let's all go over and sit down. We'll talk about it. Go ahead. There. There. Wait a minute. Hmm? Something out of this carpet. What is it, Ed? No, the landlord put it there. It's a piece of tin... Covers a hole in the floor. Okay. Run over and sit down. Uh, I'll have a look under the carpet. Well. What is it, Captain? District of Columbia license plates. 38 562, the getaway car. Well, that pins it on. Well, Ed, might as well talk now. Gun ready. Yeah. Ed, tell the doors unlocked to come in. Tell them. Doors unlocked, come in. What's the idea, Emma? Joe McCann. Watch him. Joe will get me. That's Joe McCann. Okay, okay, okay. Turn it, I'm told. Put the cuffs on him. Right. All right, you two, let's go. You'll have a lot of years to think about the four million you didn't get. All Joe McCann and Ed McNamara got from the four million dollar Washington currency robbery done were long terms in a federal penitentiary. While in prison, McCann handpicked a new gang from among his fellow convicts. 
With him, they were to carry out a new series of spectacular crimes. And that's next week's case, isn't it, Director Malone? Yes, Don. We'll look forward to hearing these inside facts, Director Malone. And thank you for a fine report tonight. Now, before we broadcast our nationwide clues, here is a word from Waterman. If I were to ask you, what do you buy ink for? You'd answer, why, that's easy to write with. But then I'd answer and say, do you know there's an ink, Waterman's Blue Black Ink, which gives you up to 6,500 extra words per filling of your pen? Yes, Waterman's ink goes up to three times as far as other nationally advertised ink. This is a fact, a fact proved by actual tests conducted by a nationally known independent laboratory. Here's another fact. Waterman's blue black ink is all ink. Nothing added, no dilution, no harmful solvent. That's another reason why Waterman's ink enables you to write with clear, sharp letters, writing that resists the passing of time as well as fading in the effects of water. Of course you buy ink to write with, but when you buy Waterman's Blue Black Ink, you write much more with one filling of your pen. You write easily, clearly, and the writing lasts as long as the paper it's written on. You pay only ten cents for Waterman's Ink in the handy tip-fill bottle. In addition to Waterman's Blue Black, you can choose among seven other smart colors. Next time, get this world-favorite ink, Waterman. Now, Gangbusters Nationwide Clues, broadcast every week as a public service to assist American police in their war against the underworld. Attention, citizens, West Coast. Be on watch for Antonio Tavera, indicted for murder of federal officer, engaged in performance of official duties. Official description... Antonio Tavera, T-A-V-E-R-A, alias Miguel Leon Rico, 5 feet 7 one half inches, 135 pounds, black hair, brown eyes, vertical scar, center of forehead, vertical scar, center of forehead. Caution, Tavera is dangerous and may be armed. Citizen Southern States. Be on lookout for murderer who escaped state prison, Fort Myers, Florida. William Alfred Sawyer, 5 feet 11 inches, 120 pounds, blonde hair, blue eyes, sallow complexion, scar right side of face, very large birthmark, upper left arm, scar inside left forearm. Watch for escape murderer, William Alfred Sawyer. Wanted by FBI, Indiana armed robbery charge, Frank Domer Berman, 5 feet 11 and 1 half inches, 185 pounds, brown hair, brown eyes, 5 moles on right side of face, 3 moles on left side of face, tattoos, anchor left forearm, heart left wrist. Watch for Frank Elmer Berman, considered dangerous. These are the clues on the most urgently sought persons in the United States tonight, March 23rd. If you have any information concerning these clues, notify your local police, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, or gangbusters at once. Next week, new facts about Joe McCann and the West Side Syndicate. New members handpicked behind prison walls. New daring, new devices, new successes. Until the steady hand of the law moves in to prove again the old truths about the wages of sin. Listen next week, same time, same station, to this case of Joe McCann and the West Side Syndicate on Gangbusters. And remember, in peace or in war, the American Red Cross never ends its efforts to relieve suffering and pain. So give, give generously. Gangbusters is a Phillips H. Lord production for Waterman's Pens and Waterman's Ink. This is the American Broadcasting Company.